Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ohio Huntsman Podcast. This week, our topic of the week is hunting in cold weather. So we're going to kind of go around and just talk about our, our tips, tactics for staying warm as we get you know closer. We're in December now, December, January, hunting in that kind of weather, how to stay warm, how to stay in the stand, because uh, you're not going to kill them from the couch. So... Before we get into that, I want to remind everybody that there is still time to enter our trail camera giveaway. We're giving away a stealth cam trail camera, and it's the complete package. So it has, it, it comes with the batteries, the SD card, and it even comes with an SD card reader. So you can check the cameras right on your, or check the cameras, check the pictures right on your phone out in the field. So the other reminder, because we're going to keep reminding you about this, is our shirts. We've got t-shirts, short, you know, short sleeve shirts, long sleeve shirts, and hoodies now. And the long sleeve and hoodies are just sort of unisex. The short sleeves we have, you know, just standard men's t-shirts. We have a women's cut, so it's it's a different cut, fits, you know, fits differently for women. And then we also have youth sizes. So you can outfit the whole family. You guys can be uh, looking super fly. I don't think people still say superfly, do they? No, I think you aged yourself. Uh, okay. Anywho, you'll be looking uh, dapper. Is that better? Dapper. Ooh, that's pretty old, okay. too. <laughs> I, on fleek. Okay, okay. I think that's what the kids are saying okay. these days. All right. Well, check out the shirts. They are uh, help support the show, help uh, pay for podcast hosting, that sort of thing, help keep the lights on, so... If you would, check out the shirts and make sure you're entered in the giveaway. And the other big thing is share the podcast, share the giveaway with your friends and family. We are trying to grow the Ohio Huntsman community, and we would really appreciate it if you would share. So if you are enjoying the content, if you like what you're hearing, please uh, please share. Please share on social. Tell your friends about it and just hit us up. The other reminder is... If you have questions you want us to answer on the show, send us a message on Facebook, send us a direct message on Instagram, get in contact with us some way. We are Ohio Huntsman on Facebook, Ohio Huntsman Podcast on Instagram, and we would be happy to answer any questions that you guys have. So with that, if there are no other updates that you guys want to give, we will get into the topic. Nothing. 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 I think Nothing. Good. shaking. Good. All right. So... Hunting in cold weather, where do we start? Keeping warm. I guess where I would start is late. Well, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's kind of go around and we'll all give our sort of setup, what we do to, to try to stay warm. And then from there, we'll, you know, and think about things like how do you keep your hands warm? How do you keep your feet warm? How do you just stay warm in general? <clears throat> So, do one of you guys want to start, or do you want me to start? Uh, I can start, I guess. Jake's going to start. Jake will start. Um, okay, so I guess my setup, first and foremost, if you listen to previous podcasts, I'm a big fan of the muff. Yes. Um, I need the muff. That's like never, lo- never leave home without, which I mentioned earlier on previous podcasts. I think that was our gear-focused podcast. Um, so that's super, super important for me. Uh, obviously, um, I mean, I, I guess I maybe shouldn't make an assumption, but like a jacket, insulated pants, those type of things. I changed my mind. Let's, let's <laughs> do like, how do you, let's all go around. Like what do you, any tips or tricks you have for keeping your hands warm? So you, hands you warm, started with your muff. All right. The muff for sure. Um, because in that muff you can put little hot hands Yeah, and it's just like a little heavenly warm environment in there. You can keep, you hardly even need to wear gloves if you keep your hands in that muff. Uh, so that's hands warm. That's primarily, I wear thin gloves with the muff with like one of those hot hands. Now, do you change there. your, do you change your thin gloves at all throughout the season or do you wear the same thin gloves early season, late season, but with the muff? I wear the same thin gloves no matter when. See, I, I have been also, but I don't but own a pair of like, all I own is like thin gloves, which I have a couple of pairs of the same glove pretty much. And then I have 
what I would call thicker gloves. Right. I don't have any intermediate. If I had something a little thicker but still gave me mobility, I would probably do that later in the season. See, I that's what I it. that's what I was gonna say. Like I feel like because these, I want to say the past two muzzleloader seasons have been pretty brutally cold. Yeah, and it you know it wasn't long with having your hands out of the muff before my thin gloves were. I mean, they're nice to keep that initial chill off when you pull your hands out, but it doesn't take long of like, oh, I think I hear something. I better get mm-hmm. my gun up or, you know, get my bow and, you know, be ready for your hands to start to get cold. And so I don't have anything yet, but I might be looking for kind of a, like you said, a kind of a tweener glove where it's not just a thin polyester glove or, a, you know, a thin like polyester backed with a leather palm but it's not a like 100 gram thinsulate glove glove. Right. You know? right. Something in between that still gives me the dexterity because I I hate not being able to feel. Yeah. Like especially when I'm gun hunting, like I'm always checking that my safety's on and like just. Yeah, I'm, I'm partial to thick gloves because when I was just, I don't even know how old I was. I was a kid. I was youth hunting with dad um, and there was a year I was wearing a glove you're prejudiced. You said partial. You're prejudiced. I'm prejudiced. Whatever. I'm yeah. against them. You're against yeah. thick gloves. Against yes. thick gloves. Um, because I was youth hunting with dad. So I was under 18, obviously. I don't know how old I was. Maybe 13, 14, 15, somewhere in that range. And I, there was a, this was down at the cabin, so hill country. Uh, there was a buck that kind of came up over the ridge and started kind of walking the top of the ridge and I was down a little bit off the other side and you know it was coming and dad was like there's one coming there's one coming get ready get ready so I'm you know getting ready getting ready and then when it came to the moment of truth I went to put my shoot the thing and I couldn't get my finger in the trigger guard Mm. like the glove folded over when I tried to and it was just I never by the time I was able to get my glove pulled off my hand the deer had went down over the ridge just enough and I just watched it was a buck and I just watched the rack bouncing <laughs> on top of the ridge so and it, I mean it wasn't a Boone and Crockett deer or anything but I was a kid it was right. Boone and Crockett to me right. <laughs> first buck I had ever seen I think at that point and it was so I I just can't every time that's what I do whenever I do wear a thicker glove if I ever do I'm constantly sticking my finger trying like checking the safety making sure my finger fits in the trigger guard like I'm always playing around with that just because I've had that happen to me. So. You know what I might do that that gets me thinking is because I've not seen what I've you know what I've got in in envisioned like something that's a little bit thicker but not thick like a regular winter glove is you know either I've seen those fingerless gloves or just buy something and cut the fingers off of it. The tips of my fingers, you know, hopefully. Although I don't know, man. As soon as you pull your hands out, the tips of your fingers are going to start cold. to get awfully cold, especially yeah. if the wind's blowing or anything. Yeah, if it's a real cold know. day. Because most of my gloves are, like, fingerless with the... The fold over. The mitten. They're, yeah. they're, they're a mitten with, that's fingerless inside there. Yeah. So you can fold the top of the mitten back. And, yeah, it gets cold pretty fast. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the mitten. I know it's not really conducive to... I mean, unless you have the fold off, but... I've always been a mitten fan. Any yeah. winter activity, I've always been. I prefer mittens. I, because uh, even when I wear gloves, I find myself pulling my fingers out of the fingers and making fists. Yeah, my fingers are getting cold. I also used to have a pair. I don't know what happened to them. Probably lost them in the woods. But they were those mittens. But they had thin gloves on the fingers. Ah, uh, and those were really nice. Yeah, but I haven't ever found any of those again. Yeah. Maybe you could buy, although I don't know, it's getting into two pairs of gloves. I was What I was going to say is like one of those thin, just kind of those, whatever, those acrylic, or those black, they just fit tight to skin, whatever, that you buy them, a three-pack of them at the dollar store or whatever, you know. Wear those under a fold-back fingerless mitten type of thing. Maybe that would be like your sort of homemade tweener. Could be. All right, so Jeff. You you said you like the mittens. Any other, how do you keep your hands warm? Well, my hands don't get as cold as other people seem to. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times, early season, I'm not wearing gloves at all. At all. So, and a lot of times, unless it's really bitterly cold, I won't start with gloves on. 
but I keep my gloves on like an inner layer. Okay. So when my hands do get cold, I can pull out a warm pair of gloves to put on. That's a good idea. And I've also, when it's really cold, kept a pair of gloves inside and, you know, inside, you know, inner layer and then have gloves on and when these gloves get cold, basically switch them out. Ah. You know, try to stay. I like that. Stay idea. warm. I like that idea. Only Swap downside them. is you have to get into an inner layer. Yeah. So sometimes the rest of your body gets cold when you're trying to doing do that. that. Doing that. Yeah. Okay. I'm kind of, the, I'm, my setup is similar to, to yours, Jake. I wear a thin pair of gloves with the muff. I wear the, I use, when it's cold out, I use the hot hands or the hand warmers or whatever. They, depending on how cold it is, I, I only use one or some, or if it's cold, cold, I'll, I'll put two in there. So I've got one for each hand. I struggle with those sometimes with like making sure they're exposed to enough air. Because I found that if you just open them and stuff them in your in your muff, they don't get that hot. They, yeah, they don't get that hot. And so, like, I'm getting them out and shaking them around. But then I think, like, you you just put them out in the cold air, and any warmth that was in them just got sucked right out, sucked of out of them. You know, and so, yeah. uh, you know, I struggle with those a little bit sometimes. But see, I have a strategy for that. Okay, I don't use those hot hands. I use reusable hand warmers. Okay, they're like a gel packet. With the little metal disc. Yeah, I've seen those. And then you click the disc, and then it activates. it hardens up and puts off heat. And that's an all-enclosed thing, so it doesn't require any external air right. to do that. How also, long do those last? A long time. I, you know, a lot of people were saying, like, oh, you know, you only get three or four uses out of them. I'm talking, like, how oh, much how long heat of the heat. Yeah. They... Because they're not as long as, like, the, right. the hot hands right. say, like, oh, seven hours or whatever on a... Yeah, I find that they get hotter... Than a hot hands? Than a hot hands, but last a lot, you know, they're they're only lasting an hour, right. maybe. Um, but I also found that most hot hands don't last You're much more than... seven hours out yeah, of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do... The bigger ones do last longer, and so the, the little ones, I, I'll agree. Like, they claim seven hours or whatever... And maybe you're getting seven hours of some heat, but you're not getting like that real nice warm right. heat. At 110 for degrees. Hours. Yeah, like yeah, that you're nice, not. just warm heat for seven hours. The other thing that I have seen and I've not tried is Zippo makes a like a hand warmer. And I think that, I don't know how good it would be. I've heard people talk about it on like different hunting forums and stuff, but I think that burns a fuel. It's not, it's like an enclosed flame, kind of like a thermocell flame. Mm hmm. So I got to imagine it's putting off some kind of an odor or a scent that it, you know a deer right. could pick up. But you know, if you're gun hunting and you and you're playing the wind right, maybe maybe that little bit of butane or or whatever it is that it's burning is not that big of a deal. Yeah, that but, whole category of things, uh, thermocells, um, what are they called? The buddy heaters. Oh yeah. You know, all of those they they have to put off some sort of smell. Yeah. That that that. Absolutely, the deer is going to smell. Well, aren't the buddy? Aren't those like just little propane heaters? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're yeah, propane. Yeah, I'm not sure. Are they propane? I think it's a propane that was heater. my like. They're yeah, you're using sure. the little camp yeah. canisters of propane. Okay, I didn't know if it was propane or I don't know what that other butane camp gas. But I don't know what it's called. What it's actually oh. what what that gas actually is. You know yeah. what I'm talking about though. Yeah, it's some kind of fuel. Yeah, yeah. But I know typically when I'm camping, it's methane gas. Oh, okay. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, those have to put off some sort of smell. Yeah. And absolutely the deer can recognize that smell. Whether or not they associate that with danger That's true. is the other. And I think that probably depends on how many times they, you know, how many other people are doing it. Right. You know, if everybody has a buddy heater in their blind. The deer are going to start associating that with danger. Right. How often are they getting shot at after they smell a right. buddy heater or right. whatever? It's probably just going to take one time. Yeah. Right. Or smelling the buddy heater and then seeing or smelling human, it just kind of yeah. right, right. They start to associate that, yeah, right. Okay, well, I think that covers hands. Let's move on to feet. That's the other big one that that people struggle with. I know I struggle with it. I definitely struggle with feet more than hands. Yeah. So, what kind of boots do you guys 
where? And when I say that, I mean, I'm talking like a, uh, like a nylon outer or like a synthetic upper, a leather boot, a, a rubber boot, you know, like a muck boot. What, what kind of boots do you guys like for cold weather? Jeff, I, do you I have a pair of, uh, insulated muck boots and I hate them for cold weather. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't like them at all. My feet get cold instantly. And um, what, what do you think? They're not breathable, or what do you think the reason for that is? I I, I don't really know. I mm-hmm. they I think they just they're not insulated enough. I mean, they're I don't know how insulated they are, but mm-hmm. they're they're insulated, and I don't know. My feet get cold quickly. Yeah. I think it's a breathability thing because I don't have an insulated pair of muck boots, but I have like a just a standard like a lined field pair. blazer lined muck boot, so I don't wear it in the cold. But my feet sweat a lot. Cause it's just a rubber boot. There's no breathability. So I think it yeah. might be a, you might not realize it cause it's cold, but I think your feet sweat and then get froze. That'd be my guess. Yeah. But I don't, cause that's my, with all boots, that's my issue. Yeah. My what feet I, sweat. What I think it comes to with boots is it doesn't so much matter what kind of boot you have. It's a huge factor that your boots have to be proper fitting. Yeah. Not too tight, not too loose. Because too tight doesn't allow, you know, space between your foot and the the outer of the boot to, you know, because the outside of your boot's going to get cold. Yes. So you need space there. Um, And if your boot's too big, then you're creating too much space inside your boot Mm -hmm. to get cold. Yeah. You know, so I think proper fitting boots is the biggest. I just had an idea. Right. You're talking about space and you know, it is amazing how, like if you've got some room to wiggle your toes and inside your boots after you have a thick pair of socks on, it's amazing how much warmer your feet stay and just being able to move your toes and and get, you know, help get the blood circulating through them. But that gave me an idea if, you know, like, uh, right. You need an air layer and like these Yeti cups, right. If you could get a vacuum insulated boot, Mm. Now we're talking something, right? We're talking something. Yeah. Keep your colds cold for 24 hours. Keeps your hot hot for 12 hours or whatever. There you go. Vacuum insulated something or other. Liner. Patent, patent pending. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's maybe there, maybe there's something there. <laughs> maybe. But uh, actually there might be something. Because I, there's, I remember seeing something about there's some kind of like a military pack boot or something that has, I guess it's not vacuum insulated, but it does have a like an air layer in it because there's a valve you like when they go up in a plane or something there's a valve that they're supposed to open because of the change in pressure or whatever so it's got like an air layer in this boot i forget what they're called but Hmm. it's not vacuum insulated so maybe there is still a patent pending there Mm -hmm. right but anywho so you don't like the the rubber muck boots i am i don't own a pair of well i do own just they're not they're walmart brand non-liner just a rubber boot just like for cleaning out stalls kind of rubber boot so i don't wear them hunting at all but i'm partial to i really like a leather upper i just i've had bad luck not from a warmth standpoint but just synthetic upper boots because of like the way they're sewn or the different ins you know they put the different patches or the designs on them or, or whatnot i've had bad luck with like the way they break in and on the ankle you get a crease where it it comes it bends inward and then just rubs on my right on the ball of your ankle weird yeah i've had that same issue and so you know like i've worn uninsulated leather boots just you know as my daily boots and i you know they're comfortable i get years of use out of them and so like since i don't know the past number of years i think at this point other than my really heavy insulated boots all of my boots now are leather uppers you know if you get a Gore-Tex lining in them then you know you get the waterproof but otherwise you got to you know you got to keep up with waterproofing them but I am I'm partial to a leather upper and excuse me I do have a a heavy insulated pair of boots they're like a thousand gram or maybe even 1200 gram thin slate and I honestly have moved away from them except for when it's really really cold because of the fact that any real amount of walking your feet make sweat. your feet sweat, and then you stop, you sit, you get to your spot, you stop and sit down, and 
like my feet are just prone to sweating Mm -hmm. and then my feet get cold. And then the, the big downfall with those is once my feet are cold inside those boots, it is hard to get them warmed back up. Like they, they work in reverse then like, they hold They're, the cold. They hold the cold in, yeah. I mean, because yeah. usually you can, once you get up and you start walking around and stuff, your you know, your feet kind of come back to life. Those things, I mean, there's been times where I've been out in the woods, you know, down at our, our cabin down in southern Ohio or whatever, and I'm, you know, a good ways away from the cabin and get back to the cabin, and my feet are still cold by the time I get back just because they're they're holding all that cold air in now. At, at least that's what it feels like. It just takes a long time for them to come back to life. Or, or I've come back for lunch, not taking my boots off. And I only did this once because I didn't take my boots off, figuring oh, I'm inside, the fire's burning, you know. But those boots insulated the cold in. And then I went back outside, you know, back out after lunch, and it, I was miserable. My feet froze. So I, unless it's really cold, and I got to be careful about sweating my feet up on the way to my stand with those boots because they'll make my feet sweat. Have you guys, so the one thing that, that you can do to combat that is bring a change of socks. Have you guys ever done that? I've never done it, but I've heard it done by, especially like uh, people out West do a lot of hiking in and out, you know, miles hiking in. Right. Um, I mean, your feet are going to sweat at yeah. that point. Uh, so that's kind of the, where I've heard it done a lot, but I've never done it. But I mean, it makes sense because your feet are going to sweat on the hike in or whatever, the walk in. Um, and then it's counterintuitive to take your boot off and your sock off and expose your foot to the frigid temperatures, Cold, yeah. but having dry feet is the key. Yeah. Moisture is your enemy when it comes to staying warm. I've never done that, but I have taken my boot off to put one of those hot foot thing, you know, hot hands, but for feet yeah. and because if you walk in with those, your feet are going to cool. sweat and yeah, your, your feet are going to feel like they're burning <laughs> like it's it's a bad time that was going to be my next question if you guys have ever used those so jeff it yeah. sounds like you have used the the boot insert yeah. hot hand version or whatever those yeah are. yeah and definitely my recommendations to put those in after you get seated yeah you know or i mean if you have a short walk go for it but any any sort of longer walk i mean anything over probably 100 yards it's you're gonna be cooking yeah yeah it's a bad time I've never used one. I've just always, I guess, made the assumption that by using one of those, my feet were going to sweat, and then they'd get frigid cold. Yeah. But I guess if it's going to stay hot for eight hours, I, especially in the frigid temperatures, I'm not out there for eight hours. Yeah. Um, so I guess, it, but that's always been my fear, is I didn't want to get my feet sweaty, so I've never used one. Yeah. I've not used one either, and I've same thing. I've gone back and forth, like, ah, should I try it? Should I not? And that's been my fear is that they're just going to make my feet sweat on the way in. I've never, I guess I never really thought about bringing them in with me because then you're in, I guess again, if you're gun hunting and maybe you're in like an elevated blind or some kind of box blind or something, I would just be like all the crinkling of that, you know, those wrappers aren't quiet getting into the thing and I've never, never really done that. I've always I mean, you could open it and just throw it in your pack and let it get hot and then just drop it in That's true. That's true. Yeah, but I know some people use because they've even got just like the toe area ones, right? Mm-hmm. Like they've got the whole footbed versions, and then just like the toe area ones. And so you got a couple different options. Have you ever guys? Have you guys tried any of the like battery powered heated heated socks, like the electric socks or I anything like that? No, because that would be kind of nice in that like you could walk in with un you know just regular socks, and then once your feet started getting cold, you could kick that battery pack on. The only thing that stopped me from trying that is I think they're pretty expensive. They're, you know, they're not cheap by any means, the ones I've seen at least. So that's been what's held me up on those. So we've talked about hands. We've talked about feet, boots. Do you guys have a preferred amount of insulation? Like I said, I've got like those 1,000 gram or, or they might even be 1,200 gram. And, and unless it's real cold and you're going, you got to be careful and go slow on the way in. There, it's almost. I found for me, it's almost too much. Too much insulation. Do you guys have a level that you like for cold weather? I have a pair of eight hundred. Those are my most warm boots. Is eight hundred, and I find those are pretty good boots. Those yeah. are warm. You know, um, I would 
I would feel my feet would sweat going anything above that. Yeah. I think my, I guess, go-to pair of boots is a 600. Mm-hmm. Um, not because I prefer 600 over 800. It's just what I have is a 600. Um, and I pretty much use those all season once it's, I mean, pretty much all season I can wear those. Um, but I had the same way when you, I first kind of got into hunting on my own, so to speak. It was like, oh, I need to get the warmest stuff because yeah. I freeze. And I had the same thing. You get the 1,000, the 1,200, and my feet just kept freezing, and I couldn't figure it out. But then the more I kind of researched it, looked into it, talked to other people, it was just too much, I think, and I was sweating. Yeah. Um, so I wear a 600, but my feet still do get cold in a 600. So I can't say that it's the end-all, be-all, especially when I'm in a, which we will touch on later i'm sure but when i'm in a metal stand it seems to suck the heat out through the sole of the boot kind of thing yeah so i think for me like i've got opposite ends of the spectrum right now i've got a 200 gram and i've got a thousand or 1200 gram and the the 200 grams are a little light for me so i'm thinking like that six to eight hundred range at some point here in the near future i'll probably buy that third pair and I'll have the whole range covered, I guess. Uh, but that six to 800 gram range for me seems to be good. I mean, I'm not going to sit all day stationary in that. I don't think, you know, maybe in an ideal world, you've got, you know, maybe you wear your two hundreds in and and you pack your thousand gram boots in on your back or something. I mean, that's kind of clunky to, to bring in, but if you really wanted to be out there all day. That reminds me, have you guys seen and or tried these boot blankets? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I've never used them. Because that's, so like, for those of you that don't know, and I've never tried them, but my understanding is it's sort of like a a blanket, if you will, but it's, it's sewn in the rough shape of a boot. And it's got a zipper up the side, I think, or in the back or something. The idea being you walk in with your regular boots and maybe, you know, maybe they're a lighter insulated, a 200 gram insulated boot and you got a heavy sock on. Then once you get in and you get to where you're going, you take these boot blankets out of your pack and you put your boots inside of these things and zip them up. And so that like you kind of carry your insulation in with you so that your feet don't sweat up real bad on the way in, but then you've got the insulation once you get there. It would be better than packing in two pair of boots. You know, it would be lighter. I know my 1,000 gram boots are pretty heavy, but I've never tried them. There again, they're not super cheap. It's not like you're going to buy a pair of these for 20 bucks and yeah, see if this works sort of thing. So the other thing is just like typically, you know, your boots are nasty and muddy. It just feels right. weird stuffing them inside of like a... It's like a soft kind of blanket, blanket yeah. insulated, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know if it works though. It would, you know, it's awesome, right? You kind of, I'm sure you could kind of cram these things in your pack and they're going to take up some room, but they're not a lot of weight. And if it works, you know, that would be, that would be nice. So I think we've covered hands and feet then pretty good. Let's just in general, talk about layering, what you guys do for layering materials that you like how to just stay warm in general and for me you know jake you kind of touched on it i remember as a kid like i get cold up there so i need more clothes more clothes more you know and and i leave out you know and there again we you know we were kind of raised on hunting in hill country down in, in southern ohio wayne national forest down there and you leave the cabin you got all these clothes on because i don't want to get cold and you hike up the hill and you're like drenched <laughs> super sweated up yeah and then it's not even daylight yet and you're shivering and you know you're miserable you just mm-hmm. you just you can't stay out very long when it's like that and so i've kind of refined over time my layering what layers i wear in what layers i pack in in my pack and so what do you guys do for layering I fail miserably. <laughs> <laughs> still trying to figure still, it out. I still try to figure it out, yeah. Um, I still, especially down at, at our hunting camp in Southern Ohio, I still find that I end up sweating, which granted the last couple, this year was a little better 
beginning of hunting season. It was appropriate weather, we'll call it. But um, the last by five years before that, it's been 50, 60 degrees. So that doesn't really do much for staying, I mean, layers or what you're wearing. But I still found this year, like I was getting sweaty by the time I got to the top of the hill. So I still struggle. I think I need to, I've heard it said, but I've never trusted it, that you should be uncomfortably cold when you start when you start yeah and i just can't leave out of the cabin for a all day sit you know depending how things are going to go and say i'm cold yeah. <laughs> you know and i'm going to be out here for whatever 8 hours i just can't i just i guess i need to just trust it um so i try to plus at our cabin we have a little bit of a issue with the cabin being very warm yeah, those guys love putting wood on yes. fire, man. Yes. Um, so that complicates things because it's like you have to pretty much get dressed outside because otherwise you're going to sweat. Yeah. So that probably doesn't help the situation. But The other um, thing that's hard there is like if there's a lot of guys, you might be riding in the back of a truck until you get to your spot you're on the road where you're right. going to head up into the woods. And if you're just wearing like a, a base layer – and maybe one other layer, and you're going to get in the back of a truck. Like, that's... That's cold. That's cold. So, yeah. Figuring out the layering is is well, tough. And especially um, when we're doing the other complicated thing is if you listen to our previous episodes, um, we do deer drives down there during gun season, and that also complicates things because you never know. For a couple hours, you might be standing on a drive, and then the next couple hours, you're going to be tromping through the woods so that's yeah. two totally different setups in a perfect world but you kind of have we don't come back to the cabin in between so you kind of have to plan for both so that kind of complicates things because you get all hot and sweaty tromping through the woods and then it's like oh, okay the next drive we're gonna you know maybe you get a deer so now you're dragging a deer out yeah and then you're really sweaty and then it's like all right well let's go back up in the woods on the next drive and now you're standing and then you freeze so yep. it's kind of hard to find the middle for me so what i like to do is i i like to always have a base layer um and then i like my two outermost layers you know which are typically like my hunting jacket and then you know if it's really cold then like a hoodie or something to have zippers in the front okay and if i'm gonna go up a big hill if i'm gonna be really walking unzip both right you know so then you know, I'm um, I'm almost immediately instantly cold, but as soon as I start walking, I'm warm again. And uh, it's important to, when you get up to the top and you're hot, to capture that heat. Okay. Because if you don't immediately kind of zip back up, you're going to let all that warm air out, kind of, and then you're putting, basically, you're zipping up a jacket but it, all it's keeping in is cold air. Yeah. See, for me, I'm the same. So I, I always have a long sleeve base layer on a, a polyester or a polyester merino, or I don't own any full merino base layers, but because they're again, they're kind of spendy. But you know, merino is is nice. I do have a poly merino blend, and then most of my stuff is just polyester for base layers. Then I'll typically wear. And that's a, you know, that's a tight fitting base layer. Then I'll typically wear a looser fitting, another looser fitting polyester layer. And then from there, it depends on how cold it is. I will either wear like a polyester hoodie, a, I've got some like quarter zip polyester layers that have some, they're thicker material. And then... Or, or I will even do like a, a cotton poly blend at that layer. It, it's far enough away from my, my skin to where, uh, uh, you know, the cotton in there. Because I try to avoid cotton uh -huh. if at all possible. You're getting real technical with these fabrics here. Well, it matters, man. It matters. All right. It's a big difference. So I, I avoid cotton at, if at all possible. Well, I guess let's back up. Why do we avoid cotton on the base layer? So cotton, like even if it's a, um, what do they call like a, like a long john or a thermal, you know, that, but it's cotton. Cotton, once it's wet, provides no insulating value once it's wet. P 
polyester and merino, those fabrics still, once they're wet, they still provide warmth. Once cotton's wet, it actually draws the heat out. Whereas, and I don't really, I think it, I think it has to do with the, the fibers, the polyester fibers. Well, I'm not sure about polyester. Polyester might be a solid fiber, but the merino fibers might be hollow to where they've, they've got trapped air in the fiber itself. And so you still get insulating, you get an insulating value even when the fabric is wet. So wet from rain, I mean, if you're, if you're out in the rain and you're wet down to your base layer, like you're wet, wet, but mostly when you sweat that layer up, one, you still have some insulating value once it's sweaty and wet and two, those poly and or merino layers dry faster. So you hike up the hill, you get all sweaty for me. I don't zip up right away when I get up to the top because I want like, sometimes you'll see me up. If you were to see me up there, I'm up there like kind of flapping my jacket open to kind of like, I got to get this moisture out of here before I then zip up. So I will, I go up and leave everything unzipped. Don't, don't start adding layers until I start to feel that little bit of chill. Like, Oh yeah, I, I remember it's cold out here now. That's when I start to typically I'll zip up before I start adding layers, but I'm kind of torn on that some, cause I don't like the movement of adding a layer. There's a lot of, you know, you're getting right. in your pack, you're getting a layer out, you're, if it's something you're putting over your head, right? You got to, if you have a hat, right? You're taking a hat off. There's a lot of movement that goes on with adding a layer. If it's a zip up layer, it's not, it's not bad, but maybe I should, before I zip up, like my first my first line of defense should be adding a layer because I, you know, it's not that long after I got up there, all the commotion of me getting to where I was going. I don't know. I'm still figuring that one out. The other thing that I, that I bought a while ago and, I, and this year actually was the first year I used it is one of those like packable puffy vests. So it rolls up to be honest, it's not much bigger than a, like a Chipotle burrito, once it's all rolled up and cinched up in its little sleeve, it's bigger around than a Chipotle burrito, but it's about the, that length, right? And so it doesn't take up, a, it's super light, doesn't take up a ton of room. I'm officially hungry now. <laughs> yeah. We got dinner after this. But, and so, it, you know, it rides around in my pack, and I can add that as like a, I don't know. I kind of call it like a free insulating layer in that it's, it's pretty light and it doesn't take up a ton of room. Whereas if I pack my jacket in like my jacket, even if I roll it up or whatever, it takes up room in my pack and not that it's heavy per se, but I like having that little vest cause it's, it's sort of a freebie. Now the thing with that is you can't put it, that fabric is thorns or any kind of sharp would just shred that thing. Right. It's got, you know, I mean, I don't know. I'm getting untechnical with my fabric now, but whatever that swishy, maybe it's a a nylon outer or something, but it's thin and it just, you would shred it walking through the woods with any kind of briars or sharp sticks or anything like that. So it's got to be an under layer because you would ruin it the first time. So the other thing for really cold weather that I like is insulated bibs. If I'm going to be sitting something about, bibs like having that come up your legs and up onto your chest like that extra little bit of fabric really just helps keep the cold air out and so insulated bibs are nice yeah. for really cold i'm a huge fan for a super cold muzzleloader season i don't even know where we got them i think dad got them at an auction or something but we have these full yeah. blaze orange bibs those are cov- or those coveralls bibs are, those are coveralls coveralls yeah. those are nice too Speaking of cold, that was a cold day because we dad got those for like nothing because it was a bitter cold February day. Um, oh, you were with him when he got Yeah, those. I was with him. And there was a little sporting goods store going out of business. And it was so cold outside. It, they were doing it in the parking lot. Oh. It was so cold I outside. I was there. Was it in Medina? Yeah. Yeah. I was there too. I got my sleeping bag then too. Yeah. We got the sleeping bag. But yeah, it was so cold that they were just giving stuff away basically. Oh, really? So that's that's how dad got all that stuff. Sleeping bags, those coveralls. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the coverall. Um, bought a lifetime pl- supply of jackets. Yeah. Especially if you're going to be 
sitting in a tree stand. Because the coverall is like a body mitten, right? Yeah. Like you just put like, your whole no body matter in what the same you do, chamber. Right. With pants and a jacket, the cold air blows up your butt and down your butt crack. There's no <laughs> way to avoid it. I don't, I can't figure it out. Unless you have like a super oversized coat, I guess, that you like can sit on, but then it's going to restrict movement. But coveralls are key yeah. to keep even, that. I mean, you got to tuck your layers in, but even with that, like it, yeah, it's, it's just, still, it's not coveralls. as good as a, as a, yeah, like something a bib that's gonna, or a coverall. Yeah. Also, if you have coveralls that can, that go over your boot, you know, over the top of your boot, it really helps keep your boot, your feet warm. Oh, I see. You know, instead of, that, yeah, they don't tuck in. Yeah. They go over top, so the only part of your boot that's out is the bottom. Yeah. And that keeps your feet warm. Yeah. But that's yeah, an, the, with with those insulated bibs and stuff. The pair I have, which I which is really nice, has a zipper that runs the like the full length of the leg. So walking in and and you can run the zipper you can run the zipper either direction. So I can leave the bottom zip to where it's not going to snag on everything, but I can or maybe it's buttoned. Maybe the zipper only runs one direction, but it's got snaps on that. You know, it's got like a little snap closure once you zip it. Maybe I leave the bottom buttoned. Doesn't matter. If you can, if you can open the sides of those bibs when you're walking in, especially if you're walking up a hill or something, like, because there again, right, you'll get all that heat built up and, and dampness, and then you stop moving and you freeze. So you can zip those down. Like again, where you know you you can feel that cold air coming in. You're like, oh, geez. But once you start hiking, you know you're you know you get that heat built up, and you're not uncomfortable. But then you get up there and you zip them back up, and it's nice. So bibs or coveralls are great for cold, cold weather hunting. Yeah, I mean, I've even wore coveralls and then just like put them on my legs, basically, and taken them off my like for the hike in, taking them Your off upper. my shoulder, my upper. And just like tied them off, you know, take the sleeves, Tie the sleeves and yeah. tied them around and cinched it down just to try and, so I didn't get too hot walking up the hill, but yeah, the coveralls are, I don't hunt muzzleloader basically without, it, especially the last couple of years, it's been so cold. I, I wear those every muzzleloader season. Yeah. The, uh, basically the name of the game is don't get all hot and sweaty on your way in and then sit down and expect to be warm, right? You got to leave those layers off or have some way to vent them. Like Jeff said, you know, leave all your zippers open to where you can let that hot air out as you're getting in. I mean, even if you're walking on flat ground, right? Walking on flat ground through the snow, if you're carrying a pack or you're carrying a stand, just walking in the snow, you know, you wouldn't think it, but just trying to keep from slipping and falling right in the snow, you know, you're going to, build up some heat just hiking back in there and so yeah, i think what i've heard is you're supposed to when you're doing any type of activity they say to dress for 20 degrees warmer than it is because that's where you'll be comfortable dress. so if it's 30 degrees you should when you're doing your activity aka walking in you should be wearing whatever you'd wear if it was 50 degrees does that make sense i mean i understand what you're saying i'm trying to i'm trying to understand the logic of it if that because your body's producing heat, I'm assuming. I don't know. That's just what I've heard. Oh, okay, right. So, like, while you're, you're walking dressed in, for 30 degrees, you're going to be too sweat. hot. Right, right, right. right. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, um, you're supposed to dress. You're in. Yeah, there you go. I gotcha. So, dress for 20 degrees warmer while you're doing the activity. So, that would be the walking, whatever. I mean, mm. obviously, not sitting in the stand. That's not activity at that right. point. Um, that's just what I've heard. I've never officially tried it, but that's what I've heard from, like, People probably who a good rule of thumb. Spend a lot of time outside, you know, runners that run outside yeah. and say dress for 20 degrees warmer or else you'll get too hot while you're running or right. whatever. Yeah, that's probably a good rule of thumb. The other thing that I'm, I'm just looking at my notes here that I use for cold weather, I've got two other, two other last tips. One of them is I wear a, like a heavyweight face mask because keeping that wind and cold off your cheeks, I mean, a hat is nice and it, like a, a beanie or stocking cap is nice but for me like that that face mask where it comes down and I can tuck it down inside of my jacket and it keeps the cold off my face it keeps the wind from blowing down my neck I really like that it keeps me in the stand a lot longer and you know because you're your nose and your although I don't really typically keep my face mask pulled up over my nose 
because it fogs up my glasses when I do that. But I will just keeping that cold off of my face is really helpful. But there again, you got to be careful wearing that thing in. A lot of times I'll kind of fold that up and stuff it in my pocket or something on the way in. And I've got a thinner one that I'll pull up. It's a neck gaiter style one that just goes around your neck, but I can pull it up just to keep the wind and stuff off my cheeks. And then when I get in, right, I've got that heavy weight one that I'll slide over my slide over my head. But I really like I really like those for cold weather. You guys use those at all or I do, yeah. I use a what is it? A I don't even know the name. Balaclava it's a bee balaclava or something. or something. I wanted to say that, but I think that's also like a dessert. Like I a have no idea. Baklava. What I think about. a baklava is like a pastry or something. I don't know. I don't know. Yes, I use a face mask. <laughs> um, <laughs> moving on and uh, I also when it's real cold I have like when it's real cold and I'm gun hunting I have a orange hat that has like ear flaps okay. like an Elmer Fudd type, yeah, yeah. type thing yep. I really like it Yeah, yeah. is the hat itself insulated or it's just got like insulated ear flaps sewn onto it the hat itself is slightly insulated. Okay, like so it's, it's got an, thicker than a regular ball cap. Yeah, yeah, it's got an insulated layer in there, and then it's got like fur. I think it's probably fake fur, but yeah. like fur flaps that Faux come fur. down. Now, do you like this because of the nostalgia, and you just feel like a hunter, or do you like it because it actually keeps you warm? Both. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I feel pretty awesome in it. Dad's got one that looks like a like a Russian military hat. But in blaze orange, in the, yeah. yeah, and I yeah. really like that one. You got your eye on that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that thing, I've wore it before. It'll make your head sweat. It cooks you, huh? Yeah, yeah. You you got to take that off to walk up the yeah, hill. Yeah. Well, you probably got to take your hair off. That's the problem. Dad doesn't have any hair, mm. so it fits. See, yeah, works better for works him. Works better, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. So then the other the other little tip I have here. And this is a gun hunting only tip, or I guess it could be a bow hunting during gun season tip. But because we're talking about taking off and putting on layers, buy multiple layers worth of blaze orange, right? Because we, like we've said in the past, we wear full blaze orange jackets. We don't wear just the little vest because it's a, it's a safety thing. I want people to see me in the woods. Right. And it's amazing how, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but you're sitting in the woods, it gets light. You've been sitting there for two, three hours in the daylight, and then you happen to move a certain way, and you see a little sliver of, of blaze orange down the hill over there, you know, 200 yards, and there's been a guy sitting there the whole time that you didn't, and he's wearing blaze orange, but just, you know, he was behind a tree, you were behind a tree, whatever, you didn't know he was there, and he's wearing blade you know and, and so just those little vests it's like it would be easy yeah. to miss a guy wearing a little vest yeah that's all that's legal so i mean as long as you're legal you're good but just from right. our standpoint and our experiences we like full blaze orange jackets right the more orange the better there's been study after study that shows the deer especially during at gun distances cannot see blaze orange yeah it's not, I mean, it, you don't have, you don't want to be camouflaged when someone has a gun, you know, I mean, I, you don't, you want to show up, Yeah. <laughs> especially when you're hunting public land and you don't know, I mean, if you're hunting your own private place, even that though, people trespass, people get lost, people, yep. but things happen. Yeah. I just, it's too important. Like I've said before, my family's too important to me and I'm too important to my family to risk it. I just, I can't, yeah. can't do it. <laughs> yep. And so... For that reason, especially during gun season, I like to wear two layers of blaze orange. One, if I'm walking in and I've got my jacket off, I can, I'm can i still legal and I can still be seen. I've got a blaze orange sweatshirt or, or a blaze orange hoodie or something on underneath. And then two, the other time I'll take my jacket off is when I'm gutting a deer. Instead of trying to push my sleeves up, you know, I'll just take my jacket off. And I'll hang, you know, I'll typically find a stick or a tree or a little something that I can hang my jacket. So I've got this right, orange I think kind of I never flag even, hanging there. I never even thought about that until I walked up on you gutting a deer. You were down in a, like a ravine. Yeah. And you had hung it up high in a tree. Yeah. Up on the hill. And I was like, that's genius. I never would have saw him down there. Yeah. 
so yeah, I, I'm all for that too. You know, flagging, Hey, I'm here, especially if you're taking your orange off to gut a deer, you know, yeah. make sure it's still very visible. Yep. Also don't <coughs> wear white during gun season. Yeah. That's a really good rule. Yeah. Cause, uh, I've seen people wear, you know, it's a camo hat with like, you know, a white deer skull on it or whatever. And it's like, <coughs> you know, that's, that's a bad idea. Yeah. That's bad on a couple different fronts. Um, one being you're hunting white tailed deer. So when someone sees white through brush, there are people <coughs> that don't wait to see what they're shooting at, unfortunately. Um, and the second reason that's bad is there's also study after study. There's a reason why white tailed deer flag their tails and show the white deer see the white very, very well. Right. So white is not your friend. Um, that's they're very tuned in to see that white, especially white move, you know, movement of white, um, because that's how they communicate through flicking their tail, flagging. That's why when a deer runs away, it throws its tail up in the air. There's all, I mean, if you want to research I it. I thought it threw its tail up in the air to give you a target. The good old Texas, Texas heart, shot. heart shot. Well, <clears throat> can't say I haven't tried the shot, but never been successful with it. Um, but yeah, I, uh, shameless plug also going back, um, Ohio Huntsman t-shirts, blaze orange. So yes, there's your you get. lower layer. Granted it is a cotton shirt, but, um, as long as it's over your base layer, you can wear a Ohio Huntsman t-shirt. Yep, when That's you're gutting your, your deer. There you go. The only, I wish I could, <clears throat> so we 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 do our shirts through Amazon, and they don't give us the option of having blaze orange hoodies or long sleeve shirts, unfortunately. We have very, much more limited color options in those, in those styles, unfortunately. So if you want the blaze orange, it has to be a t-shirt. So, but also... You know, shameless plug again. I had my Ohio Huntsman Blaze Orange T-shirt on this gun season, best gun season I've had in a long time. So yeah, they are lucky. We talked about that before yes. the season even started. We spoke yes. that into existence. Yes, they are lucky shirts, so you should definitely buy one. And you could, you could layer up underneath of it, and maybe what you know, you just have long sleeve stuff on under it. Maybe you buy a size bigger, and you know, you can wear it while you're hunting because it's a lucky shirt. There you go. So you wouldn't want to hunt without it. Right. Absolutely not. I mean, it wouldn't be hunting at that point. Right. It would just be sitting in the woods getting cold because you're not going to see anything without it. Right. That's just silly. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Anything else? I think we've covered all of the notes that I had here for staying warm and hunting in cold weather. Anything else, you guys? Any stories about getting cold while you're... Here's my tip. I, I, there's one tip that I haven't said yet, and okay. that's don't spend unnecessary time in the woods mm. when hunting in cold weather. You know, time and time again, people will go out and like, oh, you know, I got to get out early, especially on an evening hunt, got to get out early. And then that prime, you know, last hour of light, they're already back in out the, of the woods because they cabin. were too cold. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's like, you need to to know how long you can last, yeah. Because if even if you're if you stay out but you're freezing cold, you know when you do get that shot opportunity, right. how effective of a hunter are you right. when you're right in survival mode? I've done I've suffered through a many of power hours where it's like I'm not leaving this stand, but I am freezing. Yeah. Uh, my last little tip, I guess, that we didn't touch on but I've experienced on the bad side is make sure you have something to insulate or separate your butt from the stand. Yeah. Because that metal will suck the heat out of you very, very quickly. Um, So whether that's a pad, something, you need something to get your butt more than just your pants up off that metal tree stand. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever it is you're sitting on. Metal is what's the word I'm looking for? It draws it conductor. Is it is that what I'm not the right word? Not a conductor, but it sucks the heat. It will. It never gets warm. The metal will never warm up. Yeah. You, I've even tried putting hot hands in my butt pockets and sitting on a metal stand because I was didn't have something, and it sucks the heat right out of the hot hands, and the metal never gets warm. Yeah, it just doesn't. To that end, when I'm like when I'm holding my gun. In cold weather, I make it a point to not hold any of the metal 
because like on my shotgun, the where that gun balances is on the receiver. Like, so if I was just going to hold it in the, you know, where it balanced and it, it holds nicely where I could hold it like one handed is on the metal receiver, but you, you, it just sucks the heat out of your hands holding right. that metal. And so I make it a point to hold the wood stock because you're right, man, that metal will suck the heat yeah. out. Yeah. Like I, uh, I mean, it's the same thing with your boots. If you're, you know, the, the metal tree stand platform will suck the heat right out through the sole of your boot if you're not careful. I've heard some guys even will take like a foam pad with them for a tree stand or just if, you know, like if you're going to hunt from the ground or something, just to put that insulative barrier between your feet and the ground because it, you know, same thing. You're standing on a frozen ground, standing on a block of ice, basically, right. you know, it'll, it'll suck the heat out. And so that foam layer helps. I've not done it. I've not tried it, but I could definitely see it working and being helpful. So I guess another tip, I mean, it's, I don't know, I guess it's not as conducive, especially if you're bow hunting, but, um, it's always much colder. I have felt in the stand than on the ground. I think it has probably something to do with the wind and yeah. blowing below you and circulate, circulating around below your feet. But when hunting in a ladder stand or tree stand, I always seem to get colder. It might be a movement thing because you're, but I don't know. I always seem to get colder versus when I'm sitting on a, you know, a tree seat or leaning up against a tree or something along those lines. Yeah. But one other thing I'll do, I just thought of this when I'm really cold, like I'm in this, you know, and I'm like starting to get the shivers is like we talked about being able to move your toes before I'll stand up there and like flex my muscles and now i'm not talking like bodybuilder i've got my arms out flexing but like you just tense, tense up your up. body and hold it for a few seconds and then let it go and do that like 10 times and that just you know gets that blood circulating again and and can kind of help stop the shivers and stuff that's another thing i'll do when i get cold cold so any other stories about getting cold oh, it's not fun not fun i uh water's the enemy Water's the en- water and moisture are the enemy. Yeah. But part of it is like, and I think, I think I heard this from Steve Rinella is like, sometimes you just got to get comfortable being uncomfortable right. with hunting. Like, you, you know, yeah. you're, it's not like sitting on your couch next to the fire. You, you right. know, there's going to be times where you, you're cold and you power through it. All right. I think that's kind of the mindset part of it is remembering, I guess, or trying to convince yourself if you, you know, but you're a hunter when you're out there, you know, you're right. hunting. Um, so you're basically, you have to fight through it. You have to, but yeah, I think that's, I think it was Stephen. Cause I think I've heard the same thing. Yeah. Like that's part of like back country hunting because you're trying to keep light and, you know, pack in. But he said, it's the biggest thing is the mental barrier of being, everyone gets cold or uncomfortable or their feet hurt or, and that's, you know, what he says. Like once you can get over that, and become comfortable being uncomfortable, it opens up like a whole new window of what you can do. Yeah. I mean, cause if, if you, that first little chill and you call it quits, like, you know, there is a, like you said, a mental element to it in that, like I'm sitting here till dark and it's only going to get colder from here, you know, and you just, there's a mental, I mean, don't be stupid, right? Don't, don't stay out there to where you're getting for real frostbite or something like that. Yeah, by no means are we advocating you to yeah. get frostbite. That's not yeah. what we're talking about. But I mean, some of it is just, yeah, you're cold and you're going to be cold until right. you get back to the vehicle or something. And right. you know, but so I guess you need to recognize the difference between cold and like dangerously cold. But although I feel like there's been some times where I flirted with that danger. It's like, I know dad has I a cannot story. Stop shaking. Yeah. I know dad has a story about when he first started hunting down at the cabin and they didn't know the layout of the land or anything. And he, uh, he's got a story that he tells about when he, uh, had to tuck down in behind a rock and to get out of the wind and cause he got lost. Yeah. But and he's, it's the way he tells a story is he feels like he was pretty close to danger at that yeah. point. That's why dad always carries a lighter. I didn't know that, but he, if, if dad will always, always make sure no matter how warm it is really that he has a lighter on him when he goes hunting 
I carry a lighter in my pack. And I That's never I never really realized. Yeah, ask him about it. He'll tell you a story. Yeah. I've ne- yeah, like I've never had anything like that like full body cold. I mean, I've been cold like shivering, you know, in the stand cold. I've had some times where it's like my feet are still cold and I'm back home at this point. I'm going to go soak my feet in a, not a hot bath because that would hurt, but right. you know, a a warmish bath. Yeah. I've had those instances. I had, I shot a deer. This was muzzleloader. I shot a deer, and I was hunting out at my wife's uncle's house. Shot this deer, and I'm cold at this point, right? And I had those thousand gram boots on, insulating the cold in at this point. So I, you know, typically you go over and start working on a deer, and you warm back up. But my toes never warmed back up, and I called her her uncle, and it's it's a big big field right you could drive your truck back there i called him and i said hey i shot a deer i'm gonna you know i'm gonna start working on it here you know can you come pick me up and so i get this deer gutted and uh i see him i can see his headlights up at the house and he's heading back and then like the way the field rolled his headlights you know i'm working whatever i look back up and his headlights are gone i'm like man i am freezing back here where did he go Cause I thought he forgot something. He went back up to the house or something, you know, and I'm thinking my toes are ice cubes. Where are you? Next thing I know, he comes up over this, you know, this roll in the field and he is tearing through the field. Now I'm like, what on earth is happening? Well, he finally comes around. Oh, there's a bunch of deer in the field. I was trying to hit one. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, oh, that's dude. funny. Mean, all the meanwhile, I'm standing over there just freezing to death, you know. Like, <laughs> where, to where did he one. go? Oh, but geez. yeah, that was kind of a funny cold story. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we've been at this a while. A lot of stuff on uh, keeping warm. So hopefully you guys are able to stay warm. Maybe you can get some tips out of this. Help you help you stay in the stand longer. With that, I think we're gonna. We're going to shut it off here unless you guys have anything else you want to add. No. No. We're good. All right. Well, I just uh, thank everybody for listening. Continue to listen. Share the podcast with people. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. We're Ohio Huntsman on Facebook. Ohio Huntsman Podcast on Instagram. Sign up for our giveaway. Giving away a trail camera. And I forgot to mention, we're also throwing in a t-shirt with that giveaway. So whoever wins is going to get one of our Eat Local shirts. And... With that, thanks for listening.